Yeah. Well, I haven't been injured that much uh, uh, over my career. I have focused on these adaptation periods and realizing when I'm stressed, as far as physically stressed and taking more time. But that had to be a learned experience. And uh, if I was injured, um, I would calm myself down, knowing the best thing to do is just get healthy and restart very gradually again and get back to the level that I wanted to be. A couple of years ago, I sprained my ankle on a, uh, a manhole cover. I, I run trails pretty much every day, Rocky Mountain trails. And of everything, I stepped on a manhole cover in a crowded you know, marathon at the Rocky Mountain Marathon in Phoenix. And it was the first 100 meters of the race because everybody's <coughs> coming together. So I was like, oh well. You know, and I shrugged it off, but it actually caused me a problem to work and run later that summer uh, because I went on to do Boston because I qualified for Boston. And, you know, forget those office bets, you know, they'll kill you. you know. So anyhow, um, I did have to just simply admit that I do have an injury. I need to take time, rehab, and gradually, gradually come back to the trail runs that I've been doing probably about six months later. So I have to take about six months off, and you definitely mentally have to relax to do so. Um, I was always injured all my life. <laughs> when I started to run at 14 years old, I remember I, I picked up a um, cross-country skiing program. It was right in time, and I followed it for running. So I never run before. I was very active, but I never run, and I want to become an Olympic champion in marathon. <laughs> and uh, so I start to run, and I run a lot too much. And I remember that with my mom, we go see a doctor after that. I was over training at 14 years old, after like six months of training. So, and at that point, I was always injured. And I go see a doctor in my place, and he was always telling me the same thing. Take and say, two months off, and you start again after. And I was starting two months after very fast, very hard. And it's the reason why I became a physio, because uh, all my life I was in the injury field of running, and uh, so I become a sport physio, and I specialize in running injuries. So after that, I understand all this concept. I was a lot more careful, gradual in my program. And um, at that point now, it's happened that I am injured because I play soccer too. And I'm not so injured when I run, but I am very often injured when I play soccer. And uh, I cross train, I do bicycle, I do swimming sometimes, I do jogging, soccer, I do everything. I need to move. And if it's not jogging, it's another thing. But my best is jogging in the wood uh, with minimally shoes in the nature, that's my best. So when I can keep me healthy, that's what I prefer. Uh, I've been fortunate too in that I haven't really had any injuries that have kept me from running for a uh, particularly long time. And uh, you know, there are, there are times I think where I've been lucky that I've been able to keep myself between those red and yellow lines that you, you talk about. And yesterday morning is a great example. I went running with Mark. When you're not a 2.30 marathoner and you try to run with Mark, you know when you've met your limit. So I, I met my limit and I knew when to start walking. So uh, I've been very lucky in, in understanding the tissue stress concept and being able to apply that to myself and try to keep myself from going above that red zone. Um, but you know, obviously there are, there are times where you get sick and you can't run. And uh, as my wife will attest, being around me when I'm not running for a while is not a good thing. So. Um, I guess I've been lucky as well, you know, over the, the years that I've been running, I've been pretty lucky and I haven't been injured for extended periods of time that often. Um, the, the reason I did start triathlons was, um, you know, getting a running injury and so I wanted to do something else and so decided that I would start cycling and swimming. So, you know, I always find something else to do if I, if I do find myself not able to run. Um, I think the important thing, and Danny sort of touched on it though, when you do get an injury, it is a time to to really reevaluate and, and look at why that injury happened. Happened, and oftentimes it gives you a lot of insight as to you know what you need to change and, and how you can adjust things so that it doesn't happen again. So, like everything in life, you learn from those experiences. And I think um, any time that I'm not able to run, when I do come back, I certainly appreciate it more and I enjoy it more and. Uh, but I, but, I, but I learn from it and understand why it happened and how I can hopefully prevent it from happening again. I 
as you may or may not be aware, running is a cortical phenomenon. There's a certain amount of changes that occur in your body. You get all of this information coming from peripheral joint receptors and muscles and going up to a part of our brain called the cerebellum, which controls balance and runs pretty much the rest of the system and allows us to remain upright and, and walk around. Well, there's a big emotional component to running, and a lot of those neurons, when they feed down, feed through an area of your brain called the limbic system. And the limbic system is what controls your emotion. And when I don't run, you get really good. <laughs> <laughs> and, and my experience has, has been what, what I found, which was cycling, I call it the next best biomechanical movement to practice the fitness because um, he can speak more about endorphins than I can, but you know, you, you, can, you can generate them, you can produce them in any number of ways. And, and the way I, I put it to people is we all have our way of movement of choice. And it's just for most of us, it's running, but it doesn't mean you can't find what I call the second best movement for you. And, and that's what you go to. And what I found over the years is I can actually kind of adapt my cycling, particularly on a spin bike, to kind of simulate the outdoor movement of running, particularly interval training or, or hard training. And so I'm even kind of mentally still running when, when I'm on the bike. I'm kind of transferring a little bit of the thought process. And the other thing I've always maintained about this and getting injured and not being able to run. To answer the question, have I ever not been able to run? The answer is very few times over the years. But there are times now where I choose not to run, which is a different thing. And you can choose not to and go out and do this. But again, you know, this is, as people talk about the teaching moment, uh, I found in those times when you can't run it's for a significant period of time, this relates back to the talk earlier, is that I've come up with Frank's rule, and it's what I call my two-week, two-month rule. And if you get to the point where you can't run, you find this other activity, and it'll take about two weeks before you kind of adjust to it, and you kind of feel normal doing it. And then I like the feedback from the other doctors that we can do it after about, I find the adaptive process to this new movement connecting with your fitness takes about two months. And so this is what I do when I can't run. I always remind myself of how long it took when I was 15 to get into shape. And if I really am in a period where I simply won't be able to run for a significant period of time, I find that other way of moving, it's almost as good. I even sort of visualize myself in the running when I'm in the effort, and then I remind myself of how much time it really takes 